we're loving these little discount chair made for Asia recliners. They fit in here is when we got it to hold us over because we were backed up on uh, furniture. You know, for COVID, they were back ordered. But we used to strap them, but now we realize the backs just pop off two, two clips, boom, and it comes right off. And we just flip them. And so this, see, this can just do what it wants. But when it sits on there, that sucker will rock and hit the whatever. So we used to have to strap it down. But now we just flip it, done. Sweet. and opened the doors and went down the freaking vent. All the vents and the... Wow. Yeah, it was pretty bad. So I'm crazy about my refrigerator. I, every time we leave, I just want to clean everything out, throw everything away. <laughs> Nothing can sit on that top. It all has to be in the refrigerator side doors or it doesn't ride. So dirty. At least Kim used her turbo wind thingy. She blew off the dirt. Okay. Evil Knievel. <laughs> I don't know. Huh? That's awesome. Not like the 30 degree angle. Golf carts are awesome. Much more fun than a little scooter. I don't know about more fun, but in a, for an RV park, yeah. I don't know. Like it makes that. me reminisce about Cozumel. <laughs> It could have been so much worse. Um, what kind of check was it, Shane? Booty check. Booty check. <laughs> Booty check. <laughs> so you already checked the, the back and everything? All right. I always just make sure he doesn't have the chalks on there still, or he doesn't. But there's just nothing around. Okay, ready for check. Left blinker. Right blinker. Brake. Caution. All right. Making sure all the gears are up, all the stairs are up. Mirrors extended, uh, camera on the RV working, tow haul on. Tow haul. Break on. Okay. <laughs> we lost this some bit ago. And then Shane just got some like child covers for the plugs.
Look at that. The second guy left now. The... All right, I'm watching your right side. Right side's clear. Wow, that worked. downtown Atlanta Memorial Day weekend but like I said get in a good lane and just stay there and cruise through um, RV GPS will give you heads up way early of you know where a turn will be coming up and that's one good thing about it versus Google but where we're going is from middle Georgia to Chattanooga and it's just 75 now you think, why am I going straight through the downtown? Well, it's don't jump out anybody. Oh. Um, why am I going straight through downtown? A lot of cities, their downtown isn't their busiest place anymore. You know, they built these loops to go around the city when they were so busy that, you know, you'd want to take it around, especially if you're traveling through, so you didn't have to go for the downtown traffic. Well, again some of these older cities it's better to go straight through it's actually busier on the on the dang 285 but this is busy right here but again am i freaking out no you just stay in your lane just get a lane and stay plus i've got the bandit back there she can jump lanes if i want to get over i just tell her on the radio hey i want to get over she'll jump over block for me and i go no big deal. So the only threat here is some idiot jumping in front of me. We're at dead stop. But again, it will go. I've been in Atlanta a lot with friends and... Okay, this sucks. It will go. into Holiday Park. We've been here before. So nice. Got it all set up. It's a Sunday, so I expected they would be closed. We like this park. As long as it's not raining. Gonna get the golf cart out.
Bethany is my guide. Get out and walk. I can't see around this what I'm gonna get myself into. Okay, nice. It's this one right here. So what were you saying, Shane? I don't know. <laughs> Just showing what I don't know. What I struggle with is how high, because it's different grades, different places, you know? So, I mean, if the pin would kind of lift up in there, then you'd see it kind of travel. Because in the gap of the pin... That would be better. When you see that pin, it has a space between the very bottom and the top. If I could just kind of get to the middle and see, I can see that I could get to the middle of that. For some reason, it's so locked in, it wants to travel with it, you know? Oregon. How much that flatbed cost you? It's a long story with that. You got a minute? Yeah. I fell in love with it, and then I found out they didn't make it anymore. Oh, that particular brand? Yep. That one's unique because it's all aluminum welded. Oh, nice. Light. Strong and light. Strong and light. That's mine, by the way, that black 450. So, I waited. I'm, a re I'm now a retired physician, but I was complaining to one of my patients and he said, you know, I've got one of those in storage. Oh, wow. It came off of a, this uh, bad Ford that I got. Yes. And he want, I want 10000 for it. He paid 42000 for it. Whoa. And. Uh, you couldn't have been happier. I got it for 7500 I had about a couple thousand dollars worth of work done on the polishing the chrome and seals and lights and stuff like that i bet i bet you ran right over there didn't you to get it <laughs> you ain't just a whistling mixer i changed my order i had an order for a, a 350 but this bed only fits on a 450 or 550. what are you towing i have a 43 foot solitude okay how about okay. you that drv toy hauler right there you're 21 i'm 24. See, ours had clearance issues with the Moride pin, so this was one of the solutions was to get a flat bed because the new 17 above, uh, the beds were too tall and it was like hitting at 40 degrees. Yeah. And, but I changed my pin out and figured it out, but this was another option to go. But this is, I knew it was an expensive option. Yeah. It's nice though. So you got the Solitude, which model? Um, it's a 374. I got you. 374, so you got the half back. Yeah. Yeah. It's useless. <laughs> ah, excuse me, this might come. We're in an office. Is what you use I use mine for an office, but I drop the bed like now when the kids come, you know? Yeah. That's nice, so. So we are in Chattanooga. John and Kalen made it. They're here with us. And we're going down to see the Chattanooga Choo Choo, which is a funny story. It's where I lived. My father's friend, Robert, 
got a management contract with the SNL, the, the federal government, when the SNL failures happened. And the Chattanooga Choo Choo was one of the SNL saving loan failures. It was big. It was a big thing in the late 80s. And um, mid 80s, I'm sorry. Anyway, dad worked for him. So he said, hey, go, you know, it's not the only hotel he had a contract for. It. So anyway, dad went and managed the Choo Choo. It was a Hilton at the time, and I was about 16 years old. And I came up to stay with my dad for a summer. So I lived at the Chattanooga Choo Choo <laughs> for a whole summer. Yep. See, that's the original. We can't parallel them. I met Ice T, Ice T, and a bunch of other rats. There used to be a restaurant in here. That's the Chattanooga Choo Choo over there. Weird. But see, you see the wood and all that, how old it is? 1800s. See how old this is? Start with a K. How old the wood and everything is. Like this was gas. I mean, back in the day. See the old gas one? So you can rent these cars and stay in a rail car. Track 29. 